In this video, I wanna be talking to you about should you be cracking your lower back? And if you should, how can you do it safely? So let's go. Thanks for checking out our channel. My name's John, head therapist here at John W. Sports Injury. And it's great to have you. What we want to be doing here is helping you to understand your body, to make sure that you can remove or reduce your pain in order to achieve those sporting and exercise goals. And today I want to talk about a hotly debated but popular topic, which is cracking of your back or what we term spinal manipulations. Now you only have to look around YouTube to see how popular these can be. But are they a good thing? Are they a bad thing? You may hear arguments for both. So what I want to do first, before we dive into some actionable content, is to talk about what I like about them and maybe what I don't like about them in order to allow you to make the most informed decision about helping yourself. So firstly, what do I like about them? Well, they bring about instant gratification. And after all, that's something that we're all looking for in the modern day world. They can quickly look to resolve some pain and they can allow us to have greater movement. So that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, what they're also doing is they're highlighting to us that we have a problem. If the spine needs some sort of manipulation or we need that temporary relief, then what that's saying to us is somewhere along the line, there's a dysfunction that is creating this problem that needs to be manipulated. So these are what I like about it, but also that's what links into perhaps what I don't like about it. Well, not so much that I don't like about things, but things I think we need to be aware of. And that is that really for me, the spinal manipulation has highlighted there's a problem, but it's only gonna give us that short-term relief. What we need to do is take that highlighting of a problem, yes, by all means get that short-term relief, but correct the problem that caused it in the first place. I liken it to fixing a leak, and this is an analogy I use quite a lot, but if we're instantly got water dropping through our ceiling, what we want to do to provide temporary relief, and the first thing that we might look to do is to plug that leak. And yes, that stops the problem. But deep down we know that actually what that's done is highlighted a problem elsewhere. So we need to make our way through that chain as it were to find the problem. And if we're actually gonna solve this solution, what we're gonna need to do is correct that problem. So it's the same, we could let that, that thing that's blocking build up with some water and then the water might start coming through that and we can put another one on, we can keep doing that. And it's the same with spinal manipulations. We can keep doing that and we can get this short term relief. But what it doesn't do is create a long-term solution for us. And that is the only thing I don't like about it, is that sometimes I see people perhaps uh, highlighting that this is the only thing we need to be doing in order to resolve your issues. So that isn't the case for me. I think it needs to be part of a global treatment plan. And I see some fantastic practitioners on YouTube doing exactly that, where they use it to provide that short-term relief to give, to start the ball rolling, if you like, but that's part of the journey of correcting the long-term solution. So I hope that that is effective in allowing you to make the most informed decision to you, because there are things I like and things I don't like, but ultimately, I would be a hypocrite if I came on here and I just told you, you shouldn't do this, it's not the right thing to do, because I do it for myself, for the reasons that I mentioned. So, I think what I should do now is dive onto the floor and start showing you how I do my spinal manipulation on myself and how you can be doing that to yourself too. <laughs> So you find me here on the floor where I'm going to talk through how I look to crack my lower back. But one quick point, the techniques that I'm going to be using today are really based around stretching, something that we can safely do. Some of the other spinal manipulations that you may have seen are what we term high velocity thrusts, and these are performed by trained practitioners. So what we're talking through here is really a, an advanced concept of stretching, but not a high velocity thrust. So this can be done safely and by you, but not trying to do anything else you may have seen. So what we're looking to do is create some torsion or some rotation in the spine. And what I look to do is I look to start by bringing one leg up. So I raise my knee into this position. I lift my right leg. I therefore look to take my left hand and place that behind the knee. And what I then need to do importantly in order to create this torsion is I then place the other hand, so my right hand, flat down onto the floor. And I look in that direction. Why have I done this? Well, what I've done here is the top part of my spine I've rotated in one direction. Then as I slowly look to bring that knee down, what I've done here is I'm rotating the lumbar spine in the opposite direction. And what you might find as you slowly go down is then that you might feel a click happen at the spine. So what is a click? Why do we get this click happening? Well, 
What that's showing us is that that is the air escaping out of a tight joint. So the spine itself is made up of multiple segments and each of those have what we term articulating surfaces. So they form mini joints throughout the spine and they move on top of each other in order for us to create these movements. But these can become tight, they can become what we might term locked um, or stiff in their movements. And what that does is it traps the air. But by going through this stretching technique of creating this rotation or this torsion through the spine, we can just release that joint. So a quick reminder that we look to lift one leg up, we look to take the opposing hand and bring it behind that leg, and then I place the other hand flat on the floor and I look in that direction then it's a case of just rolling through. I can move the knee around, but at some point you'll feel that pressure around the glutes and then you might get a click. And then it's a case of just repeating onto the other side. So my left leg now comes up, my right hand becomes behind here. I look in this direction and then I look to just pull that leg down. And just then I felt that click, that release of pressure. And you might find that that then allows you to have that movement, that reduction in pain, and the things that we're looking to achieve from that spinal manipulation. So that's how I safely do my spinal manipulation. But I do want to uh, highlight to you, as I've mentioned, that when performing any of these manipulations, that they should be done as a gentle stretch, not a spinal manipulation uh, with what we term a high velocity thrust, which really should be carried out by somebody who's appropriately trained and specializing in that, in that practical skills. So there we have our spinal manipulations. A reminder, as I said, that these should only be done in a form, as I've shown you, as a stretch, not anything that you may have seen elsewhere. Spinal manipulations, or what we call high velocity thrusts, uh, are carried out by specialist trained people. So I'm not encouraging you to do those, but to use these methods of stretching in order to achieve that spinal manipulation goals. But what do you think? Do you like spinal manipulations? Do you like cracking your back? Maybe not, maybe you do. Let me know in the comments, because uh, I'd love to read them. And as I say, because it's such a hotly to um, debated topic, I love to be involved in those and hear people's different thoughts. But as I mentioned, it's a short term solution. So what you want to be doing is making sure that you're using this, but also solving the long term problem. So what I've done is I've popped a video here that you can see, which might be a helpful video in explaining one of the things that could be a problem for you. And if you like this video, if you have, well then do me a favor, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, and I'll keep you updated on our next content.